fiction and the rest of you. <laughs> um, I'm going to read excerpts jammed together from a longer essay called The Moscow Rules that's about how much I love spies and keeping secrets. <laughs> I'm a writer or I am a spy. Beyond these facts, I've attempted to figure myself out, to choose between already existing ill-fitting words and perfect phrases lacking that succinct specificity. I've tried on labels in my head. I've worn them in the privacy of my own thoughts for days, months, weeks at a time, before deciding they sit poorly. I've noted how these words change my behaviors, how with these notions echoing in my head, I begin to conform. Signing up for Tinder one month, deleting it the next, staring at men in the street, at women, at men and women, at no one. <laughs> Just FYI, I say to my parents, at some point, I might date a woman. I wondered if we were ever going to talk about that, said my mother. <laughs> it's taken me years to get here. When I make this announcement to my parents, it has been nine years since my first kiss at 19, playing spin the bottle, seven of us, theater interns sweating in Florida heat, and only two men, and of those men, only one straight. <laughs> the kiss came five days after I first skinny dipped. After dark, I waded it up to my neck and then removed both tankini components. Top first, <laughs> bottom after. I remember a shark sighting days before. I also remember the phosphorescence, the way we were illuminated as though from within. I sit with my back to the wall. I know how to do my printing, my copying, my laundry without seeing anyone. Sometimes driving home, I start to think I'm being followed and I come up with a plan to shake my tail. Two nonsensical turns a block away from home, I'll think but they always peel off and disappear. Sometimes I manage to convince myself that these habits are born of a decades-old affinity for espionage rather than drab anxiety. There can, after all, be an element of enjoyment to all this watching. I case new grocery stores with relish. There are three front door exits where I shop for food, two of those empty into the same front vestibule, lined with gumball machines and claw games. There is invariably a central display of watered-down apple cider or eggnog or citronella candles, off to one side, a recess full of shopping carts waits on tired parents trudging from work to fill their pantries. Two automatic doors <laughs> empty into the parking lot. They constantly open and shut as shoppers enter and exit, or just pass through on their way to the third entrance, or the Starbucks at the corner of the building. The Starbucks. Four exits. After I first read Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, I arrived at my next orthodontist appointment with a plan. I would make it through all the tugging and scraping and scolding with some dignity. I would pretend that I had fallen into the hands of the Russians and was being tortured for information I would never divulge. <laughs> Beneath the fluorescence and faint Christian rock, I opened my mouth for the new arch wire and transformed pain into delight. Landscapes shift. I moved to new cities and learned the terrain. My search for coffee shops, which are too empty, which too full, is a reconnoitering. I learned my new home. Where can I go and not be recognized? What habits, what places can I make my own and hold close to my chest, protected from influence? At my most recent dental appointment, I was fitted for a night guard. I have begun to grind my teeth at night. When the hygienist told me this, she asked me whether anyone had noticed. Notice what? She rephrased. Is there anyone to listen when you're sleeping? She asked. They might hear the noises you're unaware of making. <laughs> no, I said. <laughs> no, I thought. I couldn't think of anything worse than to be observed so intimately with such knowledge. I imagined these noises were inadvertent, like talking in your sleep, but ugly, jammed and guttural. I put thought into what comes out of my mouth. I choose carefully. I've been choosing carefully since I was born. The hygienist tilted me back and filled the tray with the oozing impression material. I started to panic. The last time I had an impression taken of my teeth, it was for a retainer and I kept choking. She asked me to open wide and I found a spot on the ceiling. The fiber tiles were old. One had a light brown stain at the corner. I kept my eyes fixed on that stain and I let my mind thud its practice refrain. Don't tell them anything. Don't tell them anything. Thank you.